Travis. How are we doing? Uh, good. I wanted to ask you a question about Pat. Um, in the offseason, obviously, he, he interjected his voice into the social justice cause, and you were very supportive of that. I'm wondering if you can look back on that from then till now. Um, how do you think that that, if it all changed, how he's viewed in the city in light of that context and, and just, you know, by fans and Chiefs fans? Yeah, I mean, first of all, it's uh, it's something that's very real. It's something that's still happening uh, to this day, and uh, and and the social justice issues have to be have to be approached in the in the in the correct way. And I think that Kansas City has done an unbelievable job of coming together, um, and and really uh, being a family, being a community that supports each other. I know there's a lot of Black Lives uh, murals on the streets all over the all over the town. I think. Um, Mayor Lucas has done an unbelievable job in, in supporting uh, the community in that regard and making sure that it's, it's very well known that, you know, we, uh, we lock arms and, and, and we stand together uh, about this, these issues. Thanks, Travis. Let's go next to Jayla Jones. Go ahead, Jayla. Hi, Travis. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Yes, I can. So going back to back is difficult to say the least, especially when you're going against a player as decorated as Tom Brady and for you specifically going head to head with Gronk. So would you say you felt any type of pressure as we inch closer to Sunday? And if so, what are you and the team doing to stay focused and grounded as you gear up for the big stage a second time? Well, I mean, when you're going up against a great uh, quarterback like Tom Brady is and how, uh, how legendary he's been in games like this, um, you just have to be able to control what you can control. And that's what we do on the offensive side of the ball. I, we, uh, we preach, you know, situational football, um, taking care of the football, winning the turnover over battle. Um, things like that are, 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 are things that we can control as an offense. And, and you know what? Going up against a high-powered offense like that, that's the, that's the key is you just got to make sure you're putting up six points um, more, more than you're putting up three. And, uh, but at the end of the day, putting points on the board so that, you know, you give yourself a chance in the fourth quarter. We'll go next to Adam Teicher. Go ahead, Adam. Hey, Travis. Um, you guys have been a really good road team since you've been here. Um, and even in the last couple of years, your record has been better on the road than at home. Given that this is like a, a road game, I wanted to ask you, why have you guys been so good? Is something you can put your finger on? Why you guys been able to kind of eliminate those distractions that seem to get other teams on the road? Man, I wish I could put point, put my finger on it. I think um, the level of focus, determination kind of goes up when you're going into somebody else's house. Um, just little stuff like that. I, I do feel like sometimes when we play at home, we can feel more relaxed, more at at ease because we're in our our environment, um, but at the same time, and it's uh, everybody's going to be geared up, fired up, and ready to go for this one. It uh, doesn't matter if it was a home or away game. I think uh, both sides, uh, that is, both teams are are, are going to be locked in, doing everything they can to win the football game. Let's go next to Karen Kornacki. Go ahead, Karen. Hi, Travis. Good to see you. Can you hear me okay? Uh, just barely. Just barely. Okay, let me see if I can turn this up a little bit. No, I can't turn it up anymore. How about if I I talk louder? Can you hear me now? Now I can. Okay, great. Hey, Travis, you guys had that really cool play at the end of the first quarter in the Super Bowl, a fourth and one, and it was the little shuffle that got the first down before you guys scored. And I remember hearing Patrick say later, Oh, he was so excited for that play because you guys had worked on it, worked on it, and never used it. You reserved it for the Super Bowl. When you guys have a play that is called on the big stage like that, does that get the adrenaline going? Does that get, I mean, are you guys so excited because you worked on it so much, it's been saved, and you know the opposing team has never seen it before? Yeah, I think uh, I think those plays um... – give you a little bit more excitement. I mean, the fun, the fun ones that, uh, that, you know, the defense is going to, you know, not be ready for. I think, I think the, the play you're talking about, um, Pasadena or no, I forget which, uh, which one it was. I think it was Rose Bowl, right? Parade. I think, uh, that play in, in general, I think we were all excited to, to finally get called and ran just because of, uh, how much we had been working on it, uh, week in, week out and uh, had it in the game plan all year and finally used it on fourth and one down on the goal line. Uh, I think it's just, you know, 
getting excited for every single play call that comes in, especially when you're down in the red zone. Uh, you got to have that kind of mentality in a game like this because uh, you never know when uh, three points, uh, a field goal and a, and a touchdown, you know, the end of a drive, whether you get the field goal or whether you get the touchdown is going to be the deciding factor in the game. So you want to put, you want to get excited and put up as many touchdowns as you can. We'll go next to Diana Rossini. Go ahead, Diana. Hey, Travis, uh, you, you know, your coach, um, I'm sure you know this, but he's got the best record in the Super Bowl era with uh, two weeks to prepare for a game. So you give him more time and I guess you just keep getting better. So what is he like in terms of preparation for, for obviously this, the biggest game of the year? Um, I think um, I think what he does the best of uh, as, a, as a leader, as a coach, is he challenges the guys um, to to meet expectation. And uh, and the, the past two weeks, you know, we've had the full game plan in for the past two weeks and we've been able to, you know, get after it in practice. You know, the, the fact that we can trust him, make sure he's he's very aware it's week 20, week 21, whatever you want to call it. Um, and a lot of guys are, are banged up, but at the end of the day, we have to get our work in. So it's a, it's a little bit of trust between the, both sides and, and making sure that he's, he's going to keep us fresh. But um, I think just going into, uh, going into a bye week before the actual game, uh, Coach Reed does a great job of just challenging us to make sure that we, we don't miss a day. We don't miss a snap. We don't miss a rep. And, um, and sure enough, I think uh, we're as ready as, as we've ever been this week. Let's go next to Brad Simcox. Go ahead, Brad. Hey there, Travis. Uh, greetings from the UK and congratulations on reaching the Super Bowl again. Um, some of the great touchdown celebrations we've seen from the Chiefs over the years have been a, a, a team effort, such as the sack race, Tyreek's pit stop, etc. cetera. Um, have you had a chance during practice to work on a group touchdown celebration? If so, any hints on the theme or what you're planning to do to celebrate touchdowns this Sunday? I'll tell you what, I think um, when the league finally let us uh, a couple of years ago um, celebrate together, we had about 10 of them going into every single game. And, and you saw all of those. I don't know if we're burnt out and we don't have any more creativity, but we're, we're more focused on just getting in the end zone and, and uh, celebrating with our teammates. Nothing's choreographed or nothing's, you know, premeditated. It's all just kind of being uh, in the flow of the game and enjoying it with our brothers. We'll go next to Harold Coons. Go ahead, Harold. Hey, Travis, and hello from uh, 12 minutes away from Arrowhead. <laughs> Hope you're doing all right. Right on, right on. Yeah. Hey, um, I just wanted to ask you, I know the words legacy and dynasty have been kind of thrown around all this week. I just wonder what you guys have talked about internally within your conversation with coaches and teammates about just what it would mean to go back to back for you guys and, and to be one of those few teams in football history to, to finally achieve that goal for you guys. Worry about that feeling if, if we get the opportunity to, you know, actually win this game. I think it's um, right now I'm just focused on the now. I'm not really focused on the, the history the, or the future, um, the past or, the, or, you know, the future. I think it's really just the mentality of taking advantage of the hour, the, the minute and the, the day, the hour, the rep, the whatever we're doing in this building to, to get ready for Sunday. I think that's the main focus. Nobody's really thinking about the legacy or, or what it would mean. Everybody's just fired up to get out there on Sunday and do our best. We'll go next to Sarin Petro. Go ahead, Sarin. Uh, Travis, uh, last game, you guys had such great success going long to Tyreek Hill. You know, you and he work so well together. You kind of the mid route, him, him over the top. Is there kind of a sense that, you know, do you feel like that the game plan shifts for them that they they're, they're not going to want to you know see the exact same game run back on them and so maybe this is the game that that you're going to find yourself with more of the single covers that Tyreek found um I think uh what coach what Bowles does the defensive coordinator for the Bucks I think what he does a great job of is mixing up the coverages and um and hats off to the defense uh the, the men that they have over there on the defensive side of the ball uh for being able to um understand the the intentions of the play caller because they they do understand the defense uh, knowing the the variety of coverages that that bowls can can dial up and um i think that you know 
going into this game, you just got to be prepared for for everything, and uh, and 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 build those instincts accordingly. Um, we uh, everything is that's on film has been you know worked on, and and hopefully that we found an answer for everything that that um, they think they have an answer for. So it's just going out there and playing ball. We'll go next to Joshua Allen. Hey, Travis, how we doing? Living the dream. I bet. Um, so studying the film, uh, what problems does the, a guy like Devin White pre, uh, present to you in coverage with his side speed and, and athleticism? I mean, the guy flies around. He, he, there's no – he's a madman back there. and He's a very smart player. Um, he understands uh, the offensive line, the flow of the offensive line. Um, and on top of that, he knows how to, you know, play the passing windows and in uh, in zone coverages. Um, and then he's a great tackler. So that, that what else you you want out of a linebacker? I mean, he does it all really well. And, uh, and it's going to be definitely a big challenge going up against him. We'll go next to Pete Sweeney. Go ahead, Pete. Hey, Trev. We know uh, NFL Films is all over the Super Bowl. And you had one of the more touching moments last year when your dad embraced you after and said, you know, you never really got the credit uh, that you deserved. After finishing second in the league and receiving, just how does he feel that? about that now what did that mean to you and what will he be doing for this repeat try um he'll be in attendance i know i know papa kels will be there uh living it up and um i'll try and go out there and get him a third super bowl meaning uh he already has one with myself and my brother from philly so uh we're gonna go and try and get him a third one um but i think it's um he's definitely told me how proud he is of me and, uh, and, and that's all that really matters to me. I could care less what, what else everyone else says, whether I'm, you know, the best tight end, the best, you know, whether I'm a tight end, a wide out, one of the best tight ends or whatever the conversation is. Um, as long as my family, the people that I grew up with, uh, everyone back home in Cleveland Heights, Ohio, as long as all of them are proud of me, um, what else can I ask for? Yeah. We'll, Thanks, go next, we'll go next to Arnie Stapleton. Hey, Travis, um, J.C. Treaders uh, wrote a couple of weeks ago that, you know, the COVID-19 season kind of proved that they didn't need – you guys don't really need that 24-7 offseason that you guys have had, you know, for the last so many years. Um, and he was actually advocating, like, just getting rid of the preseason and, and the OTAs all together. I'm wondering what you would like to see um, an offseason look like going forward, given that, you know, some of the younger guys or – guys with new teams do need that, that rhythm and that time together. What, what would you think would be a good kind of a happy medium uh, go, going forward? Well, me personally, I've always been a guy where I need the reps. I'm, I'm a big guy. Uh, I'm, I'm out there every day at practice, working my tail off. I need all the reps that I can get so I can, you know, be ready for every single look out there on the field. And that, that includes training camp. That includes OTAs and, uh, and mini camp. Um, so I'm a, I'm a big advocate for making sure that guys get those reps. I think without the mentality of me, you know, practicing every single day and, and, and really being locked in every single day, uh, without that over the course of my career, I don't know if I'm the same player. Just because I learned from every single one of those reps being out there and I learned from watching other guys run, rep, run routes and, 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 and block and do, do other things in the offseason. So I think, um, you know, I think there's, there can be a balance uh, of, of it all. But I, I do at the end of the day feel that, you know, there's a lot of guys out here that need those reps to become great and, um, and limiting those reps for guys just for the sake of, you know, um, whatever it is, uh, I think is, uh, isn't very beneficial to, to the league in, in general. Now, whether that's, you know, cutting back on preseason games or making sure that they're there for the young guys to get film and get those reps, uh, you know, I'm all for it, but I do, I do believe that um, training camp, the off season, OTAs, getting in this building and 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 working on your craft is uh, something that's needed. That's all. Thank you, Travis. Have a good one, guys.